shocking. Oh, regrets. <laughs> that means that I'm actually dreading what you've been talking to mum and dad about now. <laughs> Jessica loved the Rugrats and she actually got Grandma Lermo to uh, paint the whole Rugrat family on her bedroom wall. Yeah, mural. And Chucky came on holiday with us everywhere. And she actually gave Chucky to our grandson uh, a few weeks ago and then she put Lenny on the bottom of his shoe to say now Lenny can have him. So that was only a couple of weeks ago that she actually let go of, uh, of uh, Chucky. So. The whole family of these dolls are upstairs. <laughs> Saying that I'm a freak with, uh, I actually, <laughs> I think when John, I was still going out with John, or when I started going out with John, I still had, I might have to ask him, regrets on the wall, because my grandma like painted it on the wall, and I've got a feeling it might have still been there when me and John would started first going out, which is horrendous to think, but it was a really good drawing. Andrew and I'm Jessica's dad. And I'm Beverly and I'm Jessica's mum, commonly known as Jess's mum and dad. It's oh, the first it's bike. bike. It's the first bike, it's that pink one, isn't it? With yeah. the with the box at the back. Yeah. Very posh. That's got to be that's at Sandy Bank Avenue in yeah. Rothwell, so she'd be four, four, four or four, five. Four years old, I think, there. Yeah. That's nice the start, Christmas tree. Start of a cycling career, maybe. <laughs> to remember when it all started but I think both of us like our kids to be sporty um, and maybe not sport but maybe just activity so she was in the brownies she did swimming lessons the sort of things that I presume most kids do um, gymnastics football all the school stuff sports days and she just liked doing it I think and she liked being playing with friends and then it gets a little bit more serious, I guess. When you've had your swimming lessons, you decide that you can join a swimming club. And I remember, because I swam, but I knew what it was going to be like. So I invited the two girls to join the swimming club. And only if they wanted to, but I wasn't going to force them. And of course, they both loved it. Yeah, you used to, so you used to be like an area manager of sports centres. So when I was young, I were always going to different sports centres and doing like fun, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, inflatables and stuff. And I were always at a pool, so I think I were always just going in for swims. And I'd, to be fair, my mum and dad would probably tell you that when I was like, on holiday and stuff, all I did was spend the full time in the pool. Because I, I was working as well at the time, so Andrew worked at the centre, so it was easier for him to go and do things and do a bit of work while he was, uh, he was there. So when Andrew had a hip uh, replacement, I used to sleep in the car at half past four in the morning in a sleeping bag while Jessica was racing. So yeah, we, we, we did do it together, but it was Andrew, Andrew mainly and grandparents on an evening um, that used to pick him up from school and take him. So it's been a big family thing that we, they've all been involved, haven't they, over the, mm, over the yeah. time. But she loved it, she absolutely loved it. I think she loved the social because she was lucky in Leeds with a lot of good swimmers and she liked to muck in, you know. So on a Saturday and Sunday, if she was at Ponds Forge all weekend, I'd have to go sit on the balcony with some of the parents and Jessica would just enjoy it, enjoy it. Then occasionally it'd be like, oh God, I've got to go swim. And she'd have the swim, get coach, would have a bit of a debrief and then she'd sit with the mates for the next two or three hours before she swam again, so yeah. I'd say she was talented, she wouldn't say that. This is the problem. I was probably very good at sport, but I just didn't have the intelligence to think I could have a career in it. I didn't ever think that. So that's probably just the slight issue that I had that I didn't really put that together. So I never even thought, oh God, I could have a career in a triathlon or 
been a swimmer or I never thought that that would be a, a way in life ever never crossed my mind there was a split time when I quit swimming that I thought about going to do triathlon in Leeds and I remember and I thought oh no I can't be bothered and and so I did have that sort of oh maybe I should and then I decided against it and I didn't touch sport for years so I went from doing so much all the time to get into about 18 and I think I just wanted to enjoy life and go traveling and go out on nights out and I don't know just put step back from sport and I think I didn't do anything for you for a long time I got a bit fat and then um, yeah I came back from traveling me and John and I just kind of dabbled in it with at work we did a charity triathlon and uh, I thought oh this is all right and I literally went through it just as a, a hobby obviously no one really gets into it thinking yeah I'm going to go to the Olympics. When she'd finished her swimming career she was playing a lot of football and she had two cruciate ligament injuries so she decided running in different directions wasn't for her so I'm going to run in a straight line and she was obviously told you at Sainsbury's she did this little works charity triathlon in a swimming pool against people who were probably not very sporty and surprise surprise she won. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> no yeah. I, did. I remember being really, I reckon, I'm not kidding you, I was more nervous about that one than I have with any other triathlon I've ever done. So even you know, World Series now, don't really get nervous. That one, I was so nervous. Anyway, I remember John asking me why I was nervous. I was like, I'm nervous because if I don't win. <laughs> and he was like, what? I said, I'm just nervous that I won't win. He was like, that's weird. <laughs> and then Castle Howard, I would have said, was a first proper triathlon. Yeah, and I think that's the one that I would say became the start point for her. And I don't think she, she came about sixth, but there was people coming from all over the country to do it, so. But she didn't take it seriously. It's still, I'm having a go at it. We were on the jetty, and um, the guy gave this really long explanation of where this swim was, and you'd think they were swimming around a spaghetti bowl. It was that ridiculous. So I said to Jessica, do you know where you're going? He said, not got a clue. So as they swam out to the start boy, Jessica said to the man in the canoe, excuse me, but um, how do I know where to go? And he said, just follow the leader. And Jessica said to him, I will be the leader. <laughs> Which she not, was. Normally brag about Jessica, but I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> it was. Yeah. And then again, yeah, I think I won one of them by about ten minutes or something. And I thought, oh, maybe I am alright at this. And then yeah, I just decided to start training a bit more. And even when I got to I did a few British ones and then I eventually went to a European Cup while I was still working. And I were only swimming once a week because I could only swim when I had my day off. So I was swimming once a week and I think I must have led out on one of the European Cups. And a lot of them were either young or full-time athletes. And I thought, bloody hell, this is, I could just do it. Like if I didn't work and I tried, trained, I could do it probably a lot better. And I think it was from then. So maybe like the European Cup kind of led to me thinking, oh, like maybe I could just do this. This will be Ray. Hello, baby. Hey, hello, hello, darling. Hello, darling. So my name is Ray Butters. I, at the time I met Jessica, I worked for British Swimming. I'm an ex-army chap. My previous career was in the army and I specialised in physical training. And my specialisms were athletics and swimming. So hence that lends nicely to triathlon. When I'd met Jessica, I was going into a period of retirement. <laughs> But then you became just as coach. And then I became just as coach, yeah. Which, <laughs> which has been a wonderful part of my journey. Basically starting with Ray, he obviously structured my training. And then he, he definitely saw my potential, probably more than I did, from the outside. But yeah, he kind of knew more about the sport and things like that and then suggested to go full time. He always looked after our, mine and John's life, how we can build ourselves, not just around triathlon, if you know what I mean. So he was always looking out for me for like, helping out with sponsors or anything really, just basically helping me and John out. So it was like, he kind of covered everything. For all our athletes to be successful, it's not just about the athlete. It's about the family dynamic that they live in. And it's about their work that they have, or their career options. So unless this has got a harmony, 
it ain't gonna work. And with Jessica, that's not the case. The case is there's harmony in her life. She's quite clear about she wants to be happy and not create a fuss and she loves John. She's got loving parents and loving in-laws and it all works beautifully. And it's that, so it's pulling the strings around that. This, that was like the catalyst of the journey. If I don't think if Doug and Ray hadn't come on board, I don't think I'd be where I sat here today, like end of, because I went from working full time to be able to quit my job and go full time and he and Doug sponsored me. Ray was friends with uh, Jester's dad, Andrew, and um, he said it's quite a, she's, you know, she's quite an athlete. Um, so it, shortly afterwards, he set a meeting up. Jess and her, her partner, Johnny, came to see us in Ripon. And um, it, she just struck me as how determined uh, an athlete she was uh, with a, an unusual blend. That she's a, her and Johnny, such a lovely couple and both really nice people. So it's, such, it's compelling, really, to, uh, to want to help, uh, particularly when uh, Jess was working full time for a hotel group managing a leisure centre within the hotel and uh, so she was training of, a, of an evening so I thought oh this girl's really uh, up against it so let's see if we can help her in some way so um, we I said to her look we're in our business Taylor made timber is happy to help stuff so I said okay Jess we'll uh, we'll sponsor you so you can give up your uh, full-time job and then she then became a full-time athlete. Like when he said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll pay you. Um, like the same what I was getting at the gym um, and you can just train. And we were, I just could not, could, like for me and John, it was, especially for me, it was just like a dream country. I couldn't even comprehend it. And he was just like willing to do it for no, for no gain of his own. It was basically to be such a nice guy and just, help me out really and again it's it's rare that's probably you know spoke to him and said she's probably you know she might be able to make it if you if we can do this and and then he supported me literally all the way till we've been selected at olympic games well that is really... that's at ellen road she had a prom night at ellen road oh it is yeah so, so when she left school then. when she left school yeah all oh, right so johnny looks like a rabbit in the headlights there, <laughs> yeah. a bit surprised but they met they met when they were 15 like a mum and dad so we met when we were 15 and so did jess and johnny uh so childhood sweethearts i would say on that one johnny was such a quiet lad and we thought he's really quiet is johnny and she says but mommy's so funny he just mm. makes me laugh. And uh, they say that 15 years old, first boyfriend, only boyfriend, um, and they're as happy as, as happy as they could be really, aren't they? Mm, a good they're team. Really, uh, a good team together. They are they? a good team yeah, together. Perfect. We started going out in year 10, I think it was. We used to play cards at lunchtime and just, you know, sparks flew and... You know, one of the things that Jesse and Johnny were doing, Johnny was a test girl, was a trainee manager. Jessica was at Sainsbury's just to get some money so they could go around the world. And we waved them off, you know, you wave them off thinking, this will be a disaster. And they're probably the only kids that have been halfway around the world and come back with so much dosh, it was untrue. They, 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 they wouldn't spend it. They did work on the way around. They worked, she, she told me she worked at McDonald's and she walked out of McDonald's on the job because all the Aussies were taking the mickey out of her accent. So she just <laughs> downed tools and left. I remember talking to someone at Tesco that were at Leeds Festival, I think, and they sort of inspired me. I don't know who they are, but it changed my life. <laughs> so, not Thank that you. Worry, off we went. Yeah, so we went for a year, planned it. India. No. Nepal. Basically, we spent it's about two months in Southeast Asia. And then we met um, a girl there who was an Aussie, and typical Aussies, they invited us and said, oh, when you come to Australia, come and see us. So we lived with them for three months. That <laughs> <laughs> was a job at McDonald's. Yeah, worked at <laughs> yeah. McDonald's. Basically lived the Aussie life, went surf, uh, surfing, fishing. Loved it, didn't we? Yeah, you worked at McDonald's, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. You used to have that camper van, work nights at McDonald's and go surfing for a day. That were it every day, you were my idol. We thought it'd make so. and break us actually, as a couple, didn't we remember? Yeah. Because we were really young. Intense, wasn't it? it was really intense. Yeah. We spent every single day together for a year and a bit, didn't we? Like full on every day 
came back and they were like, oh God, got, I went back to Sainsbury's and you got a job in the gas, didn't you? Yeah, I was to go back to Tesco first though. Oh, you did, yeah. More rough. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty miserable. No, I think when I came back, we, we decided to run a bit, didn't we? Because we both got a bit fat. We started off quite well in Asia. We didn't really eat that much. And then as we got to like Australia and working in McDonald's, I think we just like started putting on weight, didn't we? Maybe, yeah. So we did lead half marathon, didn't we? Yeah, we did lead half marathon. I don't think you had like big aims of going to Olympics then, though, did you? Certainly not, no. And that's one good thing about us, really, because if, we, if, if John didn't do sport and went into cycling, it wouldn't work because I'd be out of the house for like five hours on a Saturday and Sunday and I'd never see him. Whereas I'm so lucky that we can go out together and we have a right good time, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really, really important that uh, at the end of the day, when the athletes work, worked really hard on a session or had a good race or a bad race, that they go home and they're happy. They're happy and they've got context in their life. And that's something Jess has always had. She's always had great context. If we have actually a bad race, it's not the end of the world. If we had a great race, I'm not, I'm not the best in the world. It's always context with Jessica, and a lot of people never have that. They never get to that point in their life. But Jessica's always had that. It, it, it's weird because we speak about it a lot, don't we, that it's, we both, I think, can't believe it's happened a lot but of the time. At the same time, it's not that much different, is it? No. It is quite dramatic. Yeah. That we're actually we're in this situation, but at the same time, you still just potter about your lives, don't you? Yeah. You do well with me sometimes. I'm an absolute darling, but yeah, I couldn't have done it without you. It's we're very. I'm very lucky that I've got someone that's so supportive and don't mind the weird life of a triathlete because it's not normal. I think she's probably naffed off with us there. <laughs> the fact that she's got to have another picture, but she was pretty good at pulling silly faces, yeah. wasn't she? So yeah. that'll have been an evening out in a pizza restaurant where she's just so fixed, you know, please have your picture taken. So she's come up with that for us. 